We have a lot to talk about today. Yep. In fact, uh, just just note, there's two Adams, two Joes, <laughs> so this is going to get really confusing here. Yeah. Um, and w we were thinking about like maybe we do like a battle royale. So like, what is this? Like, did they do this on purpose? There's no way they didn't do this on purpose. Or something. Like both Joes are wearing a gray shirt and both Adams are wearing a black shirt. Like this is, it's, it's gotta be staged somehow. You know what I mean? Like there's, it's, it, they've got it. Yeah, they had to have planned this shit out. That to, you know, it's determine who talks season. next or whatever. <clears throat> but uh, I will say we, we actually had planned, did I say enough ones? Yeah. You're also gonna be talking about uh, here in a second, Adam Jackson, cause I know he wants to talk a little bit about uh, kind of like the class balance and what we're thinking about for uh, 111. Okay. Yeah, totally. Uh, glad to be here. We have a lot to talk about. Yeah. So, um, first of all, I want to kind of frame this in our goals and what we're going to be doing in this patch in the immediate future, and then talking a little bit about kind of how the class team feels about classes and kind of what we're thinking in a more mid to long term space. Okay. So, for this patch, uh, we've got a lot going on. Um, one of our goals is kind of, I think, obvious to the community. We want to kind of improve the effectiveness and, and the fun of the Sorcerer and the Barbarian. So we've got a lot of changes coming in there, and I think I want to frame this in two ways of kind of what we're thinking about the Sorcerer and then what we're thinking about with the Barbarian, uh, because they both have, you know, kind of different things going on. For the Sorcerer in this patch, we're focusing on reducing something that we call Kiss-Curse mechanics, mm -hmm. which is kind of, I know, a very designery term. But it's yeah, it's like th this is what sorcerers complained about a lot is that every single time that they got a uh, uh, th they got a legendary, there would be like some sort of downside with it. This idea that we give you a really cool power effect and then we kind of take something away or make it nerfed or nerf some other part of you in some way, usually for balance reasons, um, to make sure that it's not just you know out of control and power. Yeah, usually the idea there is like, to your point, it's like, so we can we really have like, you know, 20% we can afford to downside, give you, but if we yeah. take 10% of something else away, we can give you 30% or yeah. 35% mm -hmm. and feel a little bit better about that. Exactly. Usually it's to sell a fantasy in a really strong way, but we can't like do that justifiably without just breaking the, the mechanic. Um, but we found out in a lot of ways we've been uh, a little too harsh with that, and so we're going to try and reduce or remove that in some cases. Yeah, because like most classes don't have to deal with that, and it's like Sorcerer has to deal with that all the time, apparently. It's crazy. And then the other one is late game survivability. Uh, we know that the Sorcerers typically have a, a tough time, you know, when they start getting, pushing those later night period, Nightmare Dungeon tiers. Yeah. And so we're going to be looking at ways to increase that specifically. Um, and an example of that his curse mechanic is uh, the serpentine aspect. If you know that one, it's the one where you can spawn an additional hydra, but it reduces the duration of your hydras. Right. Um, that's just no longer going to reduce the duration. It's actually going to increase it. So that's an example oh, wow. of something. We'll go into more detail later. Holy shit. Uh, for the barbarian, we're focusing on improving the early game and making it feel better and just more fluid. Um, we're gonna... Wow. Great idea. What a good idea they had. How smart. Damn, what a good, good, great idea. We're going to be improving the fury generation that you get from your basic skills. Uh huh. And then we're also looking at the late game for the Barbarian by uh, making a lot of their uniques more attractive and effective. It's too bad that nobody said this. Yeah, it really is. Because if people had told them this during the beta, I, I feel like maybe we wouldn't have these problems. So you're going to see later when we go through the notes that um, you know we're going to be changing around usually about one affix per unique from something that really isn't that attractive for players to something that they really, really want, which we think will help make those items really exciting. Uh -huh. Now, I wish that they would explain what their thinking was on providing an affix that they know is bad. Like, did they think that it was a good affix? And if so, how did they test their characters? Like, Because I, I kind of, yeah, I, I'd want to know, like, how, why do you do that? But okay. I mean, this is this is a good thing. It is good. When we make changes to items, uh, specifically items like uniques, mm -hmm. um, th many of these changes uh, only take effect on new items, right? Like I think we have an example of a hell of the hell hammer here. Yeah. Uh, upheaval. Okay. Upheaval does, I guess, maybe more. Yeah. No. No. It doesn't. It does the same amount. It's just a different roll. Um, okay. Kind of. Um, it's a little bit more complex than that. So we're going to delve into one of our examples of what we're updating so it's here. Crit damage um, but when we update damage. a unique item, um, we actually update Hellhammer in two different ways. So we're increasing the duration that the ground is going to be ignited and burning, and then we're also increasing the damage. And that's the actual unique effect power, you know, the exciting thing that the item does. Okay. But you can see here on Hellhammer, we're also doing another change where 
we're actually granting you uh, bonus critical strike damage and Amazing. removing the bonus damage of crowd control enemies, right? So on the left, what you... Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, what? Wait, what, wait, wait, what? Another change that the ground is going to be ignited and burning, and then we're updating here. Um, but when we update a unique item, um, we actually update Hellhammer in two different ways. So we're increasing the duration that the ground is going to be ignited and burning, and then we're also increasing the damage. And that's the actual unique effect power, you know, the exciting thing that the item does. Uh, maybe this isn't the new one. Maybe they haven't finished that. Because if I look at this number, right, 4255 two, four, two, five versus 4703, the number, like you guys can't see this because of my, my thing, right? The number is still the same. That's just the role of the item. They said it's not final. Okay, okay, it's not final. All right, all right. I, I mean, I, that's uh, okay, that's fine. But it's just, it seems very confusing to me. Second affix has changed, but no damage change. Yeah, yeah, the second affix is definitely changed. You can see CC damage over to critical strike damage. But you can see here on Hellhammer, we're also doing another change where we're actually granting you a bonus critical strike damage and removing the bonus damage of crowd control enemies. Great. Right, so on the left, what you see here, when you log into the game, you know, after this patch, uh -huh. the left version is what you're going to get. So you're not going to get the critical strike damage change where the actual item affix there, the, the rule changed, but you are going to get the updates to the upheaval lasting longer and doing mm -hmm. more damage. On the right, when you find your new items after the patch, you're going to get the, the new uh, affixes, the new rules and things on the item. This is not unreasonable. I think that's fine. Uh, there's always been legacy items in Diablo, or sorry, in PoE. That, that's fine. It's annoying, but understandable. So new, new, ha new versions of these items will have all of the buffs we're talking new about. New versions will right. have everything new. And the old versions will get the new stuff on the actual legendary effects, but then you'll have you won't have the new item stats on it. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. So going back to kind of other things that we're looking at. So that's the source from the barbarian we're focusing right. on. Then generally across all classes, we're doing a few other things as well. Okay. Um, we're looking at builds that aren't really hitting a high enough power level, and we're going to be just buffing them and increasing the power of them, so they should feel better and be more competitive. Right. Um, we're also going to be looking at increasing the attractiveness of kind of uniques across the board. We're focusing on Sorcerer and Barbarian for this patch. Okay. But we actually believe that we can do this kind of thing across the board. There's a lot of uniques that we think aren't really hitting the mark. Um, I hope that they do this at the same time that they add in target farming too, though. Because, like, you know, with Helltide chests, I feel like there should be, like, a really good chance of getting one of these if you open Helltide chests. Because it really sucks to have something like the Ring of Mendelin, for example, for Barbarians, or sorry, for Necromancer, or, uh, you know, Barbarians were using Gore's Gauntlets before they got nerfed. And these items were just, like, so amazing and so good that it was like, if you don't have them, it feels really bad. Uh, Tempest Roar is another one, I think, for, uh, for Druids. And I do really hope they fix that. It's something that's kind of a, a tough thing that we talk about a lot on the team. Because, you know, the, the roles and the things that the Uniques have as far as their item power are all fixed, right? They can't re-roll different stats all over the place. Yeah. So we could very easily just make, you know, all Uniques really good by putting all the best stats on the items, right? That's an easy thing to do for us. Yeah. But we kind of have a push and pull there where we don't want to just make all of them clearly the best items in the game because they have all the best stats and they have really good powers. Uh -huh. We want there to be something that's really unique and attractive about them and you have to kind of think of how you're going to fit these into your character's build. Um, but we think that we That's are fine. just not hitting the mark on a lot of them, so we're boosting them a little bit and then just kind of seeing how that goes. Okay. Um, next, we're going to be looking at opening up build-specific designs to be more widely useful. So there's a lot of um, effects on legendary powers and in other places where, you know, this effect only works in a very narrow use case, like only on a single skill or yeah. a single group of skills or we're using a certain proc to get it. And in many cases, we're just going to open that up to be more widely usable so that players can actually, you know, use them in more different builds or, or different ways. Uh, one example of this that we'll go over later is um, Chain Lightning's upgrade, cha Greater Chain Lightning. Currently, it, it gives you bonus, the, right? the bounces of Chain Lightning do bonus damage when it bounces off of you. Yeah. And we're going to change that so that it just does bonus damage when it bounces off of anything. So instead of being kind of a narrow use case where you're only using it like on a boss or a single target enemy mm -hmm. and getting value, you'll just get it a lot more often now. Yeah, it feels that's good. This is a good change. It's like a much better like lightning range skill now in that way. I can def it's easier for me to clear packs. So it's good. I like that. Yeah, totally. So that's kind of what we're looking at for this patch. Okay, so we've we talked last uh, <laughs> last week 
about um, sort of our things that we want to do like going forward in the game, other things we want to do, not all of that stuff is in this patch. Yeah, right? no, we, we have a lot of talks on our team. We have a lot of things that we're thinking about and going on. I thought it'd be really good also to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, how we feel about more longer term goals and things about the game. Okay. So um, these aren't coming in this patch, but things that we're thinking about that'll come in the future that the team's kind of focus on. Like what? Um, the first one is kind of finding ways to bring different types of damage closer together. Um, as I'm sure many of you in the community know, uh, Vulnerable and Crit are really, really strong right now. Yep. Kind of a lot of the meta is about, um, you know, you make an enemy vulnerable yeah. and then you do bonus damage to them and then you stack as much crit strike chance and crit damage as you can and then you blow them up, right? Right. Um, our game actually was foundationally made with other types of builds that aren't only those in mind, right? We have like damage over time or dot damage, um, things like Firewall um, or Shadow Necro does a lot of this. Uh, we also have overpower as a mechanic in our game. And these other different ways to build your character, we want them to have parity with, you know, vulnerable and crit damage. So we're going to be trying to find, we're, look, our goal is to find a way, and we're working on it right now, that all those different ways of dealing damage have a lot of parity. So no matter if you're an overpower build or a crit build or, a, you know, a damage over time build, you will be relatively equal in power to all the other different types of ways to build. I just hope they don't try to achieve this by making everything the exact same. Like, I, I understand that, like, because there's always going to be a best. And it's okay if vulnerability is the best, but it's not okay if vulnerability is the best by a mile. That's the issue. So hopefully they'll be able to find the, the middle ground there. Um, so another one that we're looking at is adding scaling to builds and effects that don't really scale very well in the game. This is something that I think is a big opportunity for us to uh -huh. open up just excitement in different builds in the game. And what I mean by this is we have a lot of legendary powers and effects that, like, spawn a new thing. An example of this is, like, on the Barbarian, there's some legendary powers that spawn earthquakes or yep. dust devils. Yeah. Um, another one is the Necromancer. Yeah, I got that at level 17, and I got rid of it at level 30. Yeah, I remember that one. That was a great one. It has, like, things like these shadow trails on the ground that Use deal it for damage. Like an hour. And these things, they deal what we call flat damage, which is, like, we give it a damage number, and then that's how much it does. And then that damage number kind of scales with player level. Um, but what we find is that a lot of these things are really good in the early and mid game when they drop, but then when yeah. you get to the really late game, they, they kind of fall off really hard. Um, and what we want to do is find ways to add scaling so that the player can opt into like making a build out of these things. So if I want to be an Earthquake Barbarian or a Dust Devil Barbarian, I can actually do that and it's supported by the game. Um, so that's something that we're really excited about because we think that will open up a lot more build possibilities. Okay, Ultimates good. are kind of in this range as well. It's a more long-term goal. But similarly, you know, a lot of ultimates are really strong in the early and mid game. You take it, it blows up the screen, feels great. And then in the late game, a lot of ultimates that we see that are used are just used because they buff the player in some way. Yeah, right? they don't blow up the screen. Yeah, yeah, they're a, uh, like, I think one ultimate, it's like a really good example, is like Iron Maelstrom for a Barbarian is a really cool ability. And you should want to use that ability because it's really cool. But I just use Wrath of the Berserker because it just is more useful because it's a buff and it gives me unstoppable. Right? That's it. Green the same way anymore? Yeah, right. I want you to be excited to use Bone Storm because Bone Storm is awesome, not yeah. because it gives you a buff, right? Well, if they want people to do that, then they shouldn't lock two abilities behind using minions, and they should make ultimate abilities a separate keybind. The same as Lost Ark does with Awakening skills. Like, I, I think ultimate abilities, like, they, they're, they're signature abilities that, like, define a class. Like, is it really going to break the game if you give players one more ability? Can you just make the game a little bit harder, like at, at max level, and then give people one more ability? Like, fuck. Like, it, uh, there's no reason that this can't happen. Final Fantasy XIV is on console, and there's like 35 buttons in that game. Or, yeah. you know, Grizzly Rage or other ones, right? So that's kind of something that we're thinking about uh, in the mid to long term to, to make the game kind of open up and have more builds available. So we've been talking here a little bit about <clears throat> sort of our philosophy here. We're about to get into patch notes. We're about to talk about Sorcerer. Okay. Um, but we thought that it was important to talk a little bit about this philosophy, both because we want to be um, very transparent in terms of like how we're thinking about the game and what kinds of like why we're making changes. Um, that's all we want. Really, like that's all I've wanted is like just to understand why things are happening. Like, if they said that the reason why they made the dungeon teleport five seconds and not three was to sell teleport uh, RMT, or not RMT, but uh, tra like microtransactions, 
like you know a new teleport portal and they want it to last for five seconds and not three i'd be like okay fine right but it's like that's stupid but okay they i know they fixed it uh, i get that but like i just want to know why why things are happening both so that uh, when you see changes you can understand what we're th what we're thinking like what we're going for yeah. <laughs> and also so that um uh, we can uh incorporate feedback from the community, feedback yeah. from you, into these kinds of changes. Yeah, and that goes down even to the format for this particular live stream, right? right. So like, we're gonna go through a lot of details really, really soon, which I think mm -hmm. people are really excited about. I hope people are really excited about, because we're gonna have a lot of those. <laughs> um, and then afterwards, we wanna hear back from the community about like how, like, this, was, like, how this worked. Like, did this, was this the best way to get this information? Did you get a lot of good data from us? And do you understand why we're doing some cha making the changes that we are? Yeah. Right. And to Joe's point, again, it is really useful for you to understand these things. It's going to help with the feedback that you give us back. You know, whether we're hitting it or not. Yeah. yeah and this is this is like a multi-stage type of thing. So we're 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 actually going to. You guys are about to see a ton of slides here in a second, okay. uh, going through pretty much all the different yeah. uh, detailed balance changes that are coming across uh, the, the classes. But then, uh, like we said, like we do plan on uh, releasing patch notes so that you guys can actually read them in more detail. And in those patch notes will be, you know, additional information such as like all the bug fixes and so forth that will be coming in uh, with with the game uh, itself with one one one. Okay. So, do we know when we're getting the? Uh, we plan on releasing those. Uh, so we are. Look at this. You're, <laughs> you're, 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 we, we had I'm planned asking, this to I'm talk about it later, sorry, and now like. Oh, sorry. I know now now and now you're just gonna spoil it. We're actually gonna release patch notes, uh, full patch notes. You guys will see uh, these yeah, patch I've notes first it. here on the stream, but we'll, we'll, we will release uh, patch notes next Wednesday. Uh, on August 2nd so that everyone will end up seeing it. We'll talk about the patch date here at the end of the stream. Yeah. We're closer oh, to the end of the stream. Yeah, so just wait for the end of the stream. We'll talk about when that's going to go up. Okay. But, but, uh, talk about after what we do want to do is we do want to jump straight into the uh, balance changes and so forth. Yeah. And we do want to start off with uh, the sorcerer. So we have a lot of different slides and changes here that we do want to detail. So uh, Adam, I know, wants to go through them all. Yeah, totally. So I think what I'll do is just you know, give you a few moments to look at the screen and kind of see what... Uh, okay, so I'm just going to skip through some of these changes here and just we're just going to look at them, like, and go, and go through it. Uh, like, I can kind of see why, obviously, the changes happened. Radius is cool. Yeah, this is good. Fireball's crit damage. 30% of it hits more enemies. Okay. Enhanced fireball. Changes to cast fireball increases its radius by 50%. Okay. Greater chain lightning. Obviously, that's nice. Uh, Veer's mastery. The damage increase. Okay. I don't really play sorcerer anymore. So, uh, oh, wow. Uh, reinforced rare glyph. Okay. So, there's a lot of damage reduction glyphs that now you can go for to make it easier to survive. All right. I mean, like, I just, I, I, I mean, I, I like, isn't this going to be a problem whenever Season 2 comes out and they fix resists? Because, like, now, like, uh, Sorcerer just got their survivability updated, but Sorcerer and Necromancer is going to scale with resists. So, like, they're going to have this updated survivability with no resists, and then they're going to have their main stat that scales with resists, and so they're going to be, like, really tanky? Like, I I, I don't know. I mean, that's not... That's a problem for later. Yeah, for yeah, sure. We've got... Okay, um... Go to rear node, okay, good. Max life bonus increase, damage reduction from vulnerable enemies, okay, got it. Okay, great. Serpentine aspect, okay, so basically they're just improving all the aspects. That's all nice, this is all good. Uh, damage increase, yeah, I mean, Sorcerer is just getting massively buffed, basically. Barbarian, Fury gain from 13 to, uh, sorry, from 11 to 13. Flay, Frenzy, Lunging Strike. Enhanced Rupture goes from 45% to 70. That's huge. Vulnerable from Charge is 2 from 4 seconds. That's huge, too. All right, that's good. Upheaval. Okay, great. Uh, aggressive resistance, damage reduction, gushing wounds. Okay, so basically bleeds are getting increased. Berserking damage is getting increased. Walking Arsenal time frame is getting increased, which is, I think, that's good, too, for doing timing. Okay. Let's see here. Aspect of Astral Force. Uh, ancestral Charge. Okay, so they're just buffing basically everything, right? Uh, Fields of Crimson is doing more damage. Hellhammer is being changed. Romaldi's, yeah, basically everything is being changed. Okay. 
Uh, where is it? Oh, Necromancer. Okay, here we go. Here's... Give me a second. Okay, Druid. Uh, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't really play Druid. I'm not really sure what that is. Uh, Wither, uh, Legendary Board. Willpower bonuses reduced from 50 to 40. Bonus damage, 2.5 to 4%. Empowering Reaper. Change to damaging, damaging enemies with Sever. Has a 10 to 20% spawn pool of Blight. Okay, great. Um, this is all, like, these are all, like, class changes. Uh, okay, great. Hulking aspect for Golem is increased, too. That's nice. Every class got buffs. Minions. Oh, here we go. The following attacks now deal reduced damage to, to Druid Companions and Necromancer Minions. Yep. True. Absolutely. Completely fucking true. Yeah, they fixed this. Thank God. Yeah, I still deal shit damage. Well, the problem is that you can't control the minions. That's what the issue is. Uh, but yeah, this is a this is a huge improvement. I remember I fought against an elite that had fire enchanted obelisks and shocks and I actually couldn't kill it because it just cleared all my minions in like two seconds and I couldn't even heal them. I'm here. This is a, a monster change, but it impacts minions really so necromancer and druid. But these attacks now from the Belrog and some elite affixes yeah, are going to be re dealing reduced damage to Necromancer minions and Druid companions. So your pets will just die less often to these they things. They watch your stream? Yeah. And then now we got some of our generic updates. We only have a couple of them. The first one is to a mal Malignant Heart. This is the Caged Heart of Spellbreaking. And this one... Is this the one that, um, that had resistances on it? Yeah. Man, what a surprise. What a fucking surprise. It used to say that when you took elemental damage, you gained damage resistance to that element, right? It was thematic to reduce generic yeah, damage. But because when we launched the game, we thought that this... Temerity plus stats affix increased with max life. Barrier is now based on maximum life. Now properly accounted for conditions checking the player having a barrier. Okay, so temerity got fixed. That's this good. This item was how it goes. Barrier led um, me. Uh, almost like an encyclopedia of stuff. Uh, that, <laughs> okay. Especially on the, the barb and, and sorcerer uh, classes. But I will say that... Uh, it's nice to you got what that you we got for? some stuff in for the rogue, necromancer, and yep. druid uh, players uh, as well. Keep in mind, uh, everything that I've seen so far has been good. I'm making sure that we kind of like buffed up some of the more undertuned stuff totally. that we had. Actually, seen. Yeah, this is one more good. caveat to all of that. I should have said this at the beginning. It's not final yet. Not final this yet. This is planned. That's why you probably saw the little the, the odds are very high. We do 90% of it or most of it, maybe even all, but. Um, as we get into the weeds of things and we're updating things, you know, some things may change. So this is our plan. It's very likely it'll be at least most of it, if not all of it, but it's not completely in the game yet. So there might be some we, number tweaks, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. always add a small caveat just because things are still going. So what they're saying is they're going to reduce all of the buffs down to zero whenever the patch comes out. Okay, yeah, sure. You're testing Got right it. now on our side. Correct. We want to make sure. Testing all that stuff. Yeah, so. we want to make sure not completely. I'll, I'm very <laughs> careful. I always caveat. <laughs> not final until you see it in Adam's, the game. Adam's but. being very cautious about yeah. it. Um, and, and one thing I do want to note is like there because we're, we're I'm seeing this like a little bit in chat and mm -hmm. people are yeah. going like, hey, you guys are adjusting. Uh, some some tweaks with like for instance like uh, druid summons and and, okay. and their and their minions. Same thing with like uh -huh. um, uh, there's a lot of questions about like hey w what's the overall plan on like uh, minion builds and so forth in the future? Is oh, that something boy. you guys are still going to want to work on, look at in the future? I this can is talk not about this a... for a very long time. Um, okay, do let's hear it. Yes, uh, druid and necromancer are a little bit different, so I guess I'll talk necromancer Here first. Here we go. Uh, so Necromancer Minions is absolutely a core fantasy of Necromancer players that minions are cool and awesome and that you can raise the dead and have the dead fight for you. That is that is core. Um, minions, it turns out, in all games, not just ours, are, or summons or all that, are very complicated and hard to make work. Um, they have a lot of moving parts that are different than every other class and build archetype in many games. That's they true. They have AI. They have a passive and active component to them, typically. There's a lot going on. So in this patch, we're not touching the Necromancer stuff a lot. It is on... Like, why, why, why couldn't they make it to where, like, if you used a Golem ability on a target, it would just make your minions attack that target? Why couldn't you do that? Or like if you used the like, why is it that like you can't have, they did? It's probably not that easy. You're telling me a multi-billion dollar company can't make that happen? 
Yeah, it, are, are we serious here? Yeah, I mean, get get the fuck out of here. This is a joke. Of course they can make that happen. That's insane. Uh, the problem is that, like, so I'll be fighting something... So... Let me explain the problem with minions. This is... This is me. I am the necromancer. All right? And I have my scythe. Uh, and, and let's make sure that... Oh, uh, let me go ahead and do this. And... Okay. And then I have my skeletons. Okay. And then there's the big red bad guy. Okay. I'm almost done. Okay. So here's what the problem is. There's a spider that's down here at the bottom. And all of my minions are over here with this baby spider. And they're fucking around with this tiny little spider. And because the spider, it, the AI for the minions pretty much uh, goes away as soon as they go off camera. They're not even attacking it. They're just looking at it. What? What, you wanna come over here? You wanna fucking start shit, huh? You wanna fucking do this? And there's like five of them over there looking at this random fucking mob. Meanwhile, you've got the elite and he's going like this. And then these guys are dead. And then my golem is for some reason he's over here. I don't know why he's over here. And, and he's just, he's going somewhere else. And why is he there? So, you have no idea. It's literally like, you know what it's like? It's like raiding in classic WoW. It's uh, actually the, no, that's not true. The minions are smarter. But it's almost as bad as raiding in classic WoW. All you need to have is a way that, like, why can't you just add a passive ability that's a one of one trait? that allows you to make it to where whenever you cast a core ability or a basic ability or a um, fucking darkness ability, macabre ability, any of those abilities, that the primary target of that ability becomes the minion's target. And you can opt into that or not. Why can you not do this? You're meant to with curses? Well, what if you don't want to use curses? So that just means your minions run around, they're stupid. Decrepify does that? Well, what if you don't want to use Decrepify? So then you just have to deal with uh, trash minions? Like, that's stupid. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, that's the- this is the problem with minions. There. That's how it is. Caged Heart also has auto Decrepify. It still doesn't really matter because you can't- tar you can't target attack. So overall, you guys see what the problem is with minions. It's that minions AI is bad, but you don't know what it takes to program that. The devs do. So just to say it's easy is just a guess. Well, I think that because Path of Exile has it and Diablo 3 has it, that Blizzard should have it for the new game because they had it in the old game. Diablo 2 had it? Yeah, I don't, ex I, I don't care. I, I refuse to acknowledge applying aggro to a certain mob I, I i refuse to acknowledge this is something that's impossible to do yeah i, I don't think so the team's radar of um, looking at the ways that they scale looking at the ways that things prop with them looking at just the the combination yeah. of passive versus active activity that we want also like the issue is whenever you're fighting multiple mobs with minions your damage is literally split like, you have half of your minions attacking one thing, half of them attacking something else. Meanwhile, whenever you use another spell and you hit two targets, you hit both targets for full damage. That's why the minions are problematic. The player to do there. Um, so there's definitely a lot going on there. We are thinking about it. Um, there will be stuff coming, but no promises on when, but we are actively talking about it. Uh, Druid is a little bit different because uh, from the ground up the class fantasy is not only minions, right? It's like a specific build and way to play 
Um, one of the things that we were concerned about when launching the game is we didn't want the Druid to like have just as many or more companions than the Necromancer, and they're stronger. It's like, well, where's the fantasy of the Necromancer if the Druid does it better, right? So that was something. Well, it's the fantasy of the Necromancer. Everybody plays Bone Spear, right? I mean, so like, how's that a thing? But okay. Thing that we contended with a lot. I'm sure that we're going to flex on that over time. We did add support. We still love companions on Druid, and we will absolutely be making it more of a thing. Hence why we're buffing them a lot in this patch. Right. Um, but we are careful about the design space and the fantasy of the different classes, right? We don't want all the classes to be exactly the same because then you don't feel different when you're playing. You don't have new interesting mechanics that are between them. Uh, we talk about that a lot on the team. It makes it very easy to be like, hey, just this class doesn't have this and it's fun. Give it to all the others, right? I think Necromancer and Move Speed is part of that where we overcorrected a little bit where like we didn't want them to have a teleport or dash, right? Like a rogue. If Necromancers are dashing around everywhere, that, that's a weird <laughs> fantasy, right? But, yeah. but not giving them enough movement speed options at all, I think, is something that we're coming back on. Yeah. So, but it's a push and pull, right? It's on a spectrum. No, I think that they're right about this, and I don't want to see them just give everybody everything. I think while they're doing that in Cataclysm, and by Mists of Pandaria, it was like a really big problem that everybody had like a shield wall, everybody had an immunity. It was just really bad. So, like, yeah, they shouldn't do that of how far do we go to go into another class's fantasy or an archetype that doesn't make sense fantasy-wise versus keeping true to the core and finding clever ways to fix it, or we can't fix it and we do need to bend a little bit. And yeah, it's, it's always a conversation. It's also interesting to see that the feedback, particularly on Druid Companions, like we knew that they were really cool, but like yeah. the number of Druid players who are looking for more ways to kind of mm. make more companion-focused builds is maybe a little bit higher than we expected. Yes. So, <laughs> this is one of those situations where like kind of in response to the fact that players are really hoping, like Druid players are looking to go after this fantasy of like, I am the master of the animal kingdom and yeah. I'm going to have all these, 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 and nature, right? I'm going to have all these, yeah. uh, these buddies with me. I think there's, it's, it's kind of like moving our hand a little bit. It's like, oh yeah, actually there is something really cool here. We, there is fantasy here for us to really latch onto and more that we can do. Sure, but to absolutely. Adam's point, it's still very important we make sure that the necromancer feels distinct and the druid feels distinct after these changes go in. Correct. Makes sense. Yeah, it's the eternal okay. struggle for us on class design. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we also have a lot of um, like quality of life items that we wanted to talk about that we, we actually kind of hit on last week yeah. oh, uh, sure. when we were talking uh, uh, on the campfire chat that would be coming in 111. And uh, I know we wanted to talk a little bit more about those here. Uh, I know we have some changes coming for uh, like monster density, yeah. for instance. Yeah, I want to talk about monster density. Uh, so we've, we've said a few times now that we're going to increase monster density in Nightmare Dungeons and Helltides. Yeah. These changes are in 111. Um, like we said, uh, like we said last week, and I think we have an image of an example of a nightmare dungeon. This that is the, yeah, uh, so this current. is this is how it is today. Yeah, it's about uh, right. If you go into Nostravas Deepwood, of course, monsters are going to not be exactly uh, like this, but this is an example of it. Sure. And then in one one one. Uh, it's going to change, so you can see a lot more monsters oh, yeah. here. There it is. Um, and this is really going back to you know we talked about our. I uh, I I read this on the uh, on the Diablo subreddit. Somebody actually went through and they counted all of them, and the increase was about fifty percent. It was like 115 to 175 or something like that. Yeah, so it actually was a large increase, even though, like, at first, I thought the same thing some of you guys thought. Wait, this is the same picture? It's not. Somebody went through and counted every single red dot. Uh, our mission statement for the live game of... DM uh, counted it? Yep. After you've achieved your build, being able to go in and... Uh, you know, mow down large numbers of enemies, deal with large numbers of enemies. Um, that's sort of a, a, a core part of an ARPG. That we want to make sure that we're delivering, especially in the end game content. So that's how to look for Nightmare Dungeons. On Helltide, we've been doing, uh, we've been doing the same thing, increasing density. As I said last week, um, there are some areas of Helltide that are highly dense, and we want to make sure that all of our players uh, across all of the different platforms that we support can uh, enjoy this increase to density, um, so it's not just the people with the absolute top-end equipment. So we've also been making sure that as we increase, bump up these densities, that uh, that we're um, doing it in a way that uh, performance um, stays mm -hmm. uh, stays reasonable. So you can actually, like, if if we <laughs> if we bump up density and then it turns it, the game turns into a slideshow, we didn't actually make the game more <laughs> yeah. fun. <laughs> Even though there are a lot of monsters, so it needs to stay performant at the same time. So we've been working on that at the same time so that we can really hit um, 
uh, hit that uh, target. And this is something too that you know when one one comes one one. One one one. one, one we got to have like <laughs> triple one. one. We got to have a different. Keep in mind that PoE has way more density, and um, it's also on consoles. Yeah, don't blame consoles. Blame the developers. Aim for these yeah. patches. Um, <laughs> for these patches, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, uh, when that comes out, we're going to be looking at the density there and seeing how close it comes to this this uh, this mission statement, this goal, mm -hmm. right? And the if it's not are? hitting yeah, this it goal, then we're going to keep working toward toward that goal. So mm -hmm. we you know we really want to make sure that it's capturing that fantasy of mowing down hordes of enemies. Yeah, it's a great it's a great goal for us to line ourselves around too, right? So once we're able to capture more data from uh, players on live, we can see how players with different like PC specs are able to interact with some of these spaces. It's going to continue to inform us and let us do uh, more more and more double downs from these decisions as we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then I know we have uh, some changes in coming uh, in regards to bosses and so forth as well. That's right. So we didn't talk about this last week, but we have right. gotten a lot of feedback before about the. Um, about players, particularly like in World Tiers three and four, fighting like dungeon bosses and world bosses, yeah. uh, and being able to go in there with their enhanced power. Now they've got like some uniques online. Their build has really come online, right. uh, and they've got like a lot of like damage to vulnerable targets. You know, like they <laughs> they're mowing through they're mowing through some of these bosses faster than we expect, right? So, or rather, fast fast enough that's not really challenging and not really engaging. So we are boosting the health of bosses in World Tiers three and four. You know, at brackets as you're kind of going up the experience. Uh, but you know, in exchange for this, in, in exchange for making some of these uh, these uh, these pieces just a little bit harder as players are going through them, we are also going to be making a change to the the rewards that you get going mm -hmm. through these. Okay. So now, like after one dot one. Okay, good. You're going to make it harder and give better rewards. Thank God. Okay, great. One dot one goes live. Uh, dungeon bosses starting at level 35. Even so, this is before you can get into world tiers three, four, uh -huh. uh, three and four. And then it's the. Uh, uh, so once you've done that, uh, or once you've killed those, you're going to have a guaranteed legendary item drop uh, in that space. Uh, and that's, that's insane. So is it from dungeon bosses? Like, so this is one concern that I have about this. This is great. Obviously good. Like, what about the dungeons that don't have bosses, though? Because there's a lot of dungeons that you just kill in Elite. So are they going to drop a legendary, too? Because if they don't drop a legendary, nobody's going to want to do those. So we'll see. It should just be end of dungeon loot. Yeah, whether it's a dungeon boss or whether it's an elite. It's the same as, uh, yeah, dungeon completion. It's the same as, like, Nightmare Dungeon. That's the way it should be. It's going to carry up as well uh, into our World Tiers 3 and 4. Uh, when you complete a Legion event, uh, okay. that's going to also give you a guaranteed legendary drop starting at level 35. You know, there's Great. a chance before 35, but there's it's guaranteed at level 35. Oh. You're going to have one pop in. Um, and then another, another and Butcher is, has a 100% chance to drop a Legendary as well, because um, he's a boss, of course. And then another really big one is we got, and I, this is funny, I did a, I did a, please don't follow me on Twitter unless you really want to see a lot of nerdy stuff. But, the, uh, but the, I did a Twitter <laughs> poll a while ago uh, where I basically just said, like, I said, like, you know, what do you think is the, the chance which a, a treasure goblin will drop a Legendary item? And I said it was like, you know, 10%. Zero percent. They don't. They're not treasure goblins, they're just goblins. Like, I, I, I remember I killed a treasure goblin at level 1, and I didn't get a legendary, and I was fucking furious. Why not? Why, why, can't, I, why can't I get a legendary? Why, why not? 10%. Uh, 25%, 40%, 50% with the four options. The majority of players, uh, or uh, v uh, voters, I should say, right, uh, all selected uh, 10% was the, uh, was the chance. Yeah. And everybody had their, sure. their own, you know, their, their feelings on it as they were kind of going through it. But the reality is that level, and I said level 50, Treasure Goblin, as part of this. Uh, but the reality is they have a 50% chance to drop legendary items today. Okay. Uh, and that's like going back to like level 35. And they've got a very, very high uh, chance to drop legendary items. But... Uh, we, uh, so what you're saying is sometimes I kill a treasure goblin and it doesn't drop a legendary item. That's yeah, correct. That's, yeah, I exactly, that's exactly I, I right. So happen. basically, if you flip a quarter every 25 minutes, you know, <laughs> it, it, that's basically your chance to get a legendary item when you're fighting treasure goblins in the overworld. And it's very easy to have like tails, 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 five times to roam. And then that's just, what happens to me every time. And as and as humans, we are seven <laughs> times more likely uh, to to remember a negative thing than a positive thing. Uh, so it, it's it's. 
This is nothing wrong with, uh, with rather, there's nothing wrong with the player's perception of Treasure Goblins not feeling rewarding. You don't see them that frequently relative to other content types. That's and true. when you don't get a legendary item from something called a Treasure Goblin... We need to get more Treasure Goblins in dungeons. I, I don't, we don't get enough. Like, whatever, remember like in Reaper of Souls, whenever they had like those rooms full of Treasure Goblins? And it's like you would pull up on them and it was just like... Fuck yes, dude. And you just, just fucking deep dick them as much as you can. And like, you know, every once in a while you'd run up on them with like a conduit pylon and you just fucking annihilate them. Oh, that felt so fucking good. That can feel bad. So what we decided to do is we've gone back and said starting right at level 15 for treasure goblins. Mm -hmm. 15, they have a guaranteed legendary item drop chance when you, uh, when you kill one from that point forward. Why not make it level 1? Why not let people get a, like, people can get a tabula from Hillock in, in Act 1. Why not? Was it going to break the game? Yeah, I don't know. I think it'd be cool. It's dumb. So now when you see treasure goblins in the map, you start hearing them storm yeah, like storming around in the, uh, in the corners of your, uh, your screen. You know you need to go fight that thing. You need to take it out. You need to get a legendary so. item from it. That, that happens very, very early. So we think that's going to be... Like a That's really... a good point somebody brings up that if you got a, a uh, you got one at level one, it might feel bad replacing a legendary that quickly. That's actually a good point, and I could see that as being a counter to what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's actually a good insight. I, I agree with you actually. Now that I think about it, fun uh, like updates to yeah, kind of help smart. get these things across. Fifty percent isn't useful in this case. Hundred percent, yeah. absolutely. We want you to feel like you're getting that power. Fifty percent no no more coin flip. No more coin flip. <laughs> yeah, actually, and probably more than fifty percent more. Fun. I, I will note, uh, fun. Joe yeah. missed a wonderful opportunity to drag in Gobby, the goblin. Oh. Oh, the uh, treasure goblin in, into, <laughs> into the frame. <laughs> should, I, should I try to pull We have a plush treasure goblin yes, just we, off we, screen. We have a very large uh, plush treasure goblin. Here's this giant treasure goblin is. that Look absolutely him. doesn't fit on camera Look at how happy he is. And now he's off camera again. He's now. That thing's fucking massive. Staring at Joe as he's literally talking yeah, about... Yeah, we have a lot of other stuff to discuss. Uh, so staring, at, staring at Joe very as important. he's literally talking about killing him. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. They're happy um, to be of help. It is a, it is a plush it is a plush creature. So, yeah. Um, I know, uh, and so we, I, we, we talked uh, more about... Uh, or you actually... Um, we, or when we were on the stream last yeah. week... Sorry. <clears throat> About two weeks in a row, you guys. Yeah. Uh, we talked about um, respects and yeah. so forth. So I know that that is also coming in. Yeah, in one, one, one. we just want to confirm that uh, the stuff we said last week, we're going to reduce uh, respect cost by 40%. Mm -hmm. um, players are going to get an extra stash tab, and uh, Elixir uh, stack count is going to go up to 99. Yeah, and the yeah. stash tab is just purchasable. These Purch are all good. I wish we could reset entire Paragon boards at a time. I don't see the reason why we can't just right click and reset all items on a paragon board. Like there's clearly an there there's clearly an overall like modifier that will allow you to reset all talents and all things because there's a an ability or an item that does it. So like why can't we just do it per paragon board? But at this point I think this is great and I'm happy they're making this change. This is positive. Visible by gold. That's right. So, so that's yeah. just to make sure that people don't that's right. think we're just yeah. telling it. Tap one's 100k. Tap two's yeah. 200k. Tap three's 300k. Tap four's be 400k. Yeah. Yeah. So you can buy that for your uh, seasonal uh, okay. stash and for your eternal stash. Yes, yes. exactly. Um, and then uh, one other thing that uh, we did want to talk about because this was a question that came up last week mm -hmm. uh, in regards to um, like the leaving dungeon uh, options and like teleporting out of dungeons mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, and I know you wanted to talk more about that here uh, today. I don't know. All right. All right. Let's hear it. Oh, I think I explained it pretty well last time. So clear. Yeah. So there's, clear. I, I, there's, there's a loop there. I don't know why anyone's confused. This is very clear. Um, no, no, I, I'm just kidding. We're going to change it back to three seconds. Yes. Um, okay. All right, great. All right. Well, problem solved. There we go. Basically, the reason that we increase this is um, we have, uh, in Diablo 4, we have a mechanic where when you're casting some kind of uh, spell or power um, and you get hit by some damage, you don't get interrupted immediately. You have to take about 5% of your health and damage before it gets interrupted. And this makes things like town portaling back to town, leave dungeon, etc. Mm -hmm. feel a lot better. 
Saving a prisoner. Saving a prisoner, absolutely, oh, yeah. Time. Um, so if you're taking like really incidental damage, it's not going to get interrupted. Um, but um, we were worried about a case where you're in the middle of a high intensity combat fight or in the middle of a boss fight, and we felt like it was a little bit too easy to get out of get out of that. Um, so the logic, so the boss does less than five percent of your health. I don't understand. In terms, and that's actually what it's referring to with the loop, um, uh, which again, I felt like I felt like I felt like I nailed it, but I guess I guess you know. Um, okay. And so, you know, there are other ways that we could have solved that, right? We could have said like, oh well, you get pushback on your cast, or like, oh well, it's only you don't need to solve it. You don't need to solve it. It's fine. Increased to five seconds if you're in a boss fight or something like that, but ultimately. Um, you know, what players really accurately pointed out is, look, this slows down the core loop of the game, of the game in a way that's not fun. Yeah. So we're just changing it back to three seconds. Yeah. So a great. Okay. All right. That's fine. Uh, was a dumb change. The reasoning doesn't make any sense, but all right, it's done. Let's move on. Uh, was at three seconds, went to five seconds, going back to three seconds because, Great. you know, obviously good player feedback, player and, feedback. Uh, from, from everyone. So, yeah, one more point we need to talk about, Got too. So, as, so, we've been getting a lot of feedback, obviously, on the, the uh, end game experience, tiers three and four, and, uh, you know, Nightmare Dungeons are a really big part of that. Last week we talked about how we were going to be uh, ensuring that the, the, the Nightmare Dungeon difficulty was scaled more appropriately. Yeah. Mm, uh, right. So now, like, you know, the tier 70 difficulty was the, uh, was the, the old version. Well, uh, the problem, like, with, with Nightmare Dungeons, like, this is, this is really what it is. How many of you guys get killed? Like, if, if you still play Diablo 4 and you do high-level Nightmare Dungeons, what percentage do you die to physical damage and what percentage do you die to magic damage? Ninety percent magic. I wonder why that is. I wonder what could possibly cause players to take so much more magic damage. What could it possibly be? It's one of those mysteries in video games that nobody can figure out. Man. I'd rather the the old version of tier seventy is now the the tier hundred after yeah. changes that we made. Yeah. To more accurately reflect the balance we have in Diablo Four versus yes. the, uh, the the kind of insane overtuned stuff we had prior for the tier seventy plus content. Um, one other thing that we obviously think about, like you know, the scaling difficulty is one part of this. You know, but we also get feed, uh, plenty of feedback on the. Uh, on some of the Nightmare Dungeon affixes themselves. Mm -hmm. And we know that some of these are sort of uh, ones you're going to want to basically throw in the trash right away. So you're going to want to salvage these and get, uh, and yeah. get Citadel Dust immediately upon when some of these things kind of pop up. So a couple of the ones that we're, we're actually going to be, for now, we're going to be removing a few of these as we think about reworking them or deciding what one guy do. Okay. Great. With them. Uh, but we're going to be taking these out in 1.1.1. They're not going to appear anymore. Um, that is, uh, so the first is resource drain. It's not going to be Okay. All right. Problem solved. There it is. It's gone. Okay. Great. Nobody liked it, and they deleted it. Thank you. It was, was that easy? It was that easy? Come on. Yeah, it was so easy. Yes. Showing up in uh, Nightmare Citadel, uh, Citadels anymore. Uh, Cold Enchanted is not going to be showing up in Nightmare Citadels anymore. Uh, if <laughs> wow. Isn't that the exact affix? Well, is this. That's the Nightmare Dungeon affix, not the, the, the uh, Elite affix. The Elite affix was the problem, not the Nightmare Dungeon one. But I guess Nightmare Dungeon one was bad too. But still, holy shit. So they're just getting rid of them. Problem solved. For, for a bit, and then uh, Backstabber mm -hmm. is being removed Not, as well. There it uh, is. Okay, great. All right. Wow. They actually are removing the content that's bad. Part of 1.1.1. Now, this is not by any means 
uh, an, an exhaustive list of the things we'd want to like adjust on the affix side. Uh -huh. you know, there's lots more that we want to do to kind of improve this experience. This is just sort of like a, while we're in here beginning to look at these things, we know that these are problematic. We have adjustments we want to make anyway. Yeah. We want to go ahead and pull these out and just make the experience better today for players. Yep. Cool. Awesome to hear. I know that uh, a lot of uh, players have been giving... This is a Panic W patch. They see numbers dropping. Yeah, I, I think that's probably the case. Uh, you know, like they thought that they... Uh, that, that it was going to be one way and the players weren't liking it. And uh, guess what? Now people aren't okay with it. And uh, I want to say, guys, thanks a lot. Watching all, like, everybody who's been complaining that I've been negative about Diablo 4, you're welcome. Feedback about specific uh, uh, Nightmare Dungeon affixes yeah, yeah. and everything. So mm -hmm. it's great that we've been able to jump on a few of the ones that we know are problematic uh, with the community and kind of pull them out and mm -hmm. reevaluate and see what we can end up doing with those. So um, we did, uh, obviously, we talked about uh, the, the date for the patch notes beforehand. Uh, <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> but we, we do want to specify like uh, that we are going to be releasing patch notes, uh, full patch notes next week. It's actually going to be on August. August 2nd next week on Wednesday mm -hmm. uh, we'll be releasing uh, full patch notes and then 111 is going to be coming out on August 12th which is Tuesday so right. uh, players will be did I get those right, dates right yes I, I'm doing I this by so. memory. <laughs> Am I, I have, doing, honestly, I'm doing it by memory. No idea. So. I, I've seen so many calendars in the, Tuesday, the last day. Tuesday after. Oh, oh sorry. It is no. I, I lied. Think it's not it is August eighth. It's still August eighth. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is this is dates. Just Everything's blind a blur. Right. Yeah. August eighth. Uh, sorry. August second is when the patch notes will be coming out yeah. in full, and then August eighth is when the patch it's will actually hit. After, yeah. Sorry, oh, I apologize. I've had a lot of dates in my head over the past couple weeks. Sorry, we buffed the date. Yeah, buffed the date. Buffed the dates. That's Just also like part of the patch notes. Um, but uh, so players will be able to see everything next Wednesday. We'll be posting those. So make sure to uh, stay tuned. Of course, on the uh, so Diablo social media, uh, et cetera, we'll end up uh, updating the patch notes there so pe players can see it. Just remember the patch is not that day. We're just posting the notes early yeah. so that players can actually see them. This goes back to exactly how we were talking about that we want to mm -hmm. better communicate uh, yeah. these notes here, similar to how we're doing this here on this uh, campfire chat. And then, of course, August 8th is when the patch will end, uh, end up going live for all players so that they can actually experience it and jump through with all the changes that uh, we are kind of detailing out here and they'll be seeing in the final patch notes on Wednesday next week. Um, we do want to jump into Q&A because we just went through a whole bunch of stuff right here. Um, okay. I know one... All right, so we're going we're gonna to probably skip a lot of the Q&A questions, but I'm just going to listen to them. Uh, this seems actually uh, everything that they've announced so far has been very good. Like, the twit longer will be postponed. We won't need to make it. They've removed the things that are bad, and they're trying to make them more good. That's, that's nice. I'm happy. Question that, uh, as, as we start to populate questions, feel free to ask them in, in chat sure, uh, on Twitch, by the way, because we have chat enabled good. there. Um, but I know one question like if all and those, something uh, that we talked about last week uh, as we're waiting for questions to kind of come mm -hmm. in was uh, about XP uh, in, in later game, uh, or for, for late game players and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Do we have any update and, uh, in regards to that? Uh, specific topic. I thought the yeah, I can talk about that. Changes. So we did talk about this last week, and what we said then was that, you know, we are not looking to make the game feel slower across the board. We're not looking to like slow down the players' like XP gain rate in response to like feedback about some of the other changes that we had made. You know, the goal. Like then, why do you do? You, why, why do you have like a? What, then, then why do they have a formula? I I don't understand like why they have a formula for getting less experience from lower level mobs whenever the whole game scales. Why, why, why would you even have that? And then also, um, I thought that like they, they were going to fix this with making Nightmare Dungeons just give more experience. It was really, we want to make sure the players are having a good time progressing through World Tiers 3 and 4, not feeling like they're hitting a point where it's just it's really, really difficult to make progress. Mm -hmm. So in response to some of these thoughts, we, you know, we, had, be, we had gone through and we had... Uh, you know, raise the amount of experience that you gain uh, from, like before, actually, before the uh, the 1.1 the, the patch. When we, we mm -hmm. raise, raise the amount of experience gain you get from, um, from Nightmare Dungeon, Nightmare dungeon yeah. completion, from uh, Helltide cache opening, right. uh, from Whisper completion. Like, we went and did a good buff on those yeah. those activities to make them feel uh, juicier as part of that. And now we're going through and we're updating uh, density inside the Nightmare Dungeons and yeah. on and in Helltide as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah so all of these, this, all of this to say, 
we are we are committed to increasing the speed at which the players be progressing through these later world tiers. We don't we're not happy with the speed at which uh, players are getting through some of this content mm -hmm. uh, and the kinds of behavior incentivizing as a result of that. Right? We want to make sure that players feel that they can play the way that they want and they can progress at a, at a, at a, at a decent pace. But now that we've made a number of these changes, we do want to see what the impact's going to be on the overall okay. like uh, XP gain rate across okay. the board for players and just seeing how different kinds of players are progressing. So that when we go through and we make changes, which we will be making uh, soon, I think probably yeah. likely for uh, season two, yeah. uh, when we go through and we make these changes, that's going to be uh, informed by what we see players going through and what their experience is like now. Yeah, exactly. So it's really just a question of like how much are we going to make adjustments, like what's going to feel right, and that's going to be based on like what we see from players. Mm -hmm. um, we have... Uh, Two people actually asking pretty similar <coughs> questions, but uh, one was specifically calling out Adam Jackson and his thoughts on this. But oh, uh, but they both are very similar questions. One is from uh, Febzilla, the other one's from Carnaga. I'm, I'm so sorry. Can I just jump in really yes. quick? Can I ask? Can I ask Chat a question? Uh, do you? Yes or no? Do you want Adam to read the names of people that he's getting the questions from? The uh, I, I I think we that should. Adam. <laughs> yes. Okay. He's saying he should. Okay. He absolutely should. Absolutely. Because we don't need another rob from the block situation. Yeah, see, they know about it. Yeah, you have to, yeah, read the names. Now, if it says something like 9-11 um, was an inside job or, um, it, you know, something crazy, I, I don't know, probably don't read that one. But everything else, you can read it. QA non lover 69420 <laughs> asks when they're going to make Lilith's boobs bigger. Okay, we can skip this one, sure. But uh, yeah, in general, I think it's fine. <laughs> you, Janus. <laughs> I feel like if they're going to read the names out, we should just try to <laughs> submit names until. They read a stupid one. <laughs> My cock, yeah. I, I think we should just because I don't want to go into that whole situation. Like oh, where fine, that other fine, fine, that fine. other outlet okay, is okay. made up names and we don't do that. So, sure. um, yeah. but uh, Karnaga and Febzilla, uh, they both ask about. Uh, people are all like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> well, honestly, well, you know. honestly no, it would make my job so much easier. I know. No, I wish please I could. finish your question. Well, we're going to read these. Read, read these but, uh, the question yeah. is about crowd control. Um, okay. Obviously, yeah. uh, it is a huge and, and uh, popular topic amongst the community. Uh, what are our thoughts about crowd control? What are we planning on doing about that um, here in the future? I bet we all have thoughts on that, actually. We do, yeah. Yes. Um, uh, let me let me you just say first that, yeah. that um, uh, we think that there's there as you get into situations where there are lots of monsters on screen and high end areas where um, the amount of damage that you're seeing going in and out is is uh, really high, so you're you're having to react really quickly. Situations where you're being uh, Hard, hard CC'd, or like stun or freeze or something like that, can be much more impactful than they are when the uh, intensity and the pace of combat is lower. Um, and so we want to make changes to CC to uh, make that experience more fun. Um, we we want to do that. It's not in one one one. Um, but that's those are changes that we're looking at right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's Part, l larger, larger CC stuff that yeah. we're discussing internally yeah. that we want to. I, I'm worried that um, you know, if you increase the density of nightmare dungeons, that's whenever CC is the worst. So like, aren't you going to have even more CC? Isn't it going to get even worse? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I... Kind of pair with a, a few of the big changes we have planned in the yeah. future. In fact, we're working on we're working on stuff like that for that right now. Yeah. 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 Um, there is a question here regarding, <laughs> it's my favorite question because I always get this, it's from Cookie Drops. Uh, so is there, are you guys planning on addressing the issues related to like the imper imperfectly balanced on Necromancer, mm -hmm. uh, the decrep aura on Necromancer, yeah. uh, and uh, those are addressed in 111. Yeah, we fixed it. Uh, <laughs> those are, we, we just didn't list all the, the, the bug fixes yeah. and stuff There's like a that. There's a whole lot of bug fixes. Yeah, so you guys will see those with the final notes and everything, but those are addressed 
addressed in uh, in this specific update, and it's something that I know a lot okay. of people have been asking, going like, well, I can only add one point, yet it says I can add three, and so forth, so yep. Um, yep. Uh, most definitely this being addressed just bugs. in that. Okay. Um, we've actually just been getting a, a general uh, decent amount of questions related to resistances and what the intent is going to be with yeah. resistances here in the future. Yeah. Uh, there's a ton of questions, so lots of names, uh, but sure, um, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, I guess, like, what's the vision sure. on resistances here yeah. in the future? I, I talked about it a little bit. Um, the vision is kind of, I think, what the standard vision of most games is, which is everything is impactful and meaningful and feels good, and you invest and get rewarded for those things at all times. Well, okay. Well, great. <laughs> Thank God. I was worried that, uh, that certain things weren't going to work. <laughs> but, you know, reality is a little bit harder than that, but that yeah. is kind of the, the North Star and what we're trying to do. Um, the idea is that when you when you invest in elemental resistances, you will notice a difference in the damage that you take. I would expect uh, We don't that. want just, you know, armor or damage reduction or any, like, keen stat that is just way better than everything else. That that's the only thing that you care about. Um, it is tough to find a perfect balance there of what, how impactful some things should be versus others. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, can you negate certain kinds of combat when you max things out or only focus on only one thing? And... There's a lot of gray area there that we're talking about, but our goal is that, and when we, when we go and really take a deep dive at it, is one, we don't want you to just stack armor and that's better than everything else. We don't want you to stack just like general damage resistance and that's just better than everything else. We want elemental resistances to be meaningful, but we also don't want to get to a place where, you know, you fight a fire boss and you stack all fire resistances and it actually can't hurt you. Right, there, there's always a push and pull in this the, one. The, the inverse of that is actually uh, also really dangerous, which I, is I was, that you're wandering through the game, you don't always know the kinds of creatures or affix, obviously, mm -hmm. you don't know the kinds of affixes you're going to be dealing with. You've got 0% poison resistance, and you get and you basically one tick from a, like a level 60 poison creature kills you. Sure. Right? Yeah. It's, like, it's, there's, there's, it's actually a really funny example because that's happened. Uh, you, you just need, well, why do you just, why, why can't you just not have max res? Yeah, you have max res. It's it's pretty simple, right? I mean, PoE has max res. You can increase max res, but only to ninety percent. So yeah, there's there's a balancing act. The team is, you know, as we move forward, everything that Adam just said is one hundred percent accurate. We want to make sure that the choices between like armor for mitigation for damage resistance based on passives, legendary power. You guys are uh, trying to correct me at seventy five percent, guys. Please. Please don't correct me, okay? 75% is the baseline max resistance. You can increase your max resistance with multiple other things, like obviously the Brass Dome can increase all maximum resistances by up to 5%. Uh, there are uh, talents like the um, like the fucking like the triple gold oil talent uh, that gives you 100 armor, 100 health, and uh, then also gives you max resistances by one percent. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of them, and uh, the maximum resistances that you can get. You there is max rest, max res, and then there is max max res. Max res is seventy five percent. Max max res is ninety percent. Powers, you know, uh, glyphs and paragon nodes. That's the, those things are impactful, and that resistance plays a really, really important role. The big difference here is that resistance is a thing that you are going to stack and earn separately, mm -hmm. and that they are usually tied to affixes or in, inherent affixes on rings and jewelry. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. means that some players will be able to go and uh, encounter situations where they are not going to have a predictable amount of resistance when they go into an encounter, which True. means that we just need to think about what that is going to feel like for that player and imagine a world where they are uh, able to still complete the content, but it's much more effective to have the appropriate amount of resistance. We need to make that feel impactful. Yeah. So, there's going to be situations where we are going to ensure that if you are getting into a predictable fight against a creature that you know is dealing a certain kind of damage and you don't have resistance in mind when you go into that fight, mm -hmm. you're going to be penalized for that. That's going to be a really, really yeah. difficult situation for you. you know, but we are you know, trying to balance against the general flow of Diablo 4 as it stands today as opposed to trying to like, remake it into an entirely different experience. Right. Okay. And to sort of get to the, I think the point of the question, the, the, the question there, um, which I think is, do you guys realize that resistances don't feel like they're hitting that goal right yes. now. That's right. Yep. We yeah. do realize yes. <laughs> yes. we're going yes. to make changes. Yes. All right. Sounds good. Um, there is a, a lot of questions about um, uh, mounts 
and how, like, you know, we've gotten a lot of feedback about mounts. Uh, we've seen Carbot videos. Our friend Carbot uh, wow. Animation yeah. <laughs> made an episode <laughs> about, about mounts. Very funny if you haven't seen it. Highly recommend checking it out. Um, but uh, are, are there any um, uh, discussions? Are, are you guys yeah. aware? Like, what, what are you guys planning on doing uh, in, re in relation to mounts? Yeah, there are a few. funny. It was a good year, so um, I watched it. we want to make mounts feel better, sort of broadly speaking, and a couple of those things are um, making sure that uh, the boost feels really good, especially with controller, um, where it's, it's underperforming, and um, uh, the boost actually, uh, <clears throat> the boost mechanic on the mounts, um, it actually stacks. Uh, there's a bug right now um, with that on controller, where it's not stacking properly, we're going to fix that, um, and um, uh, there's a few other. There's a key part of this is that the mount gets stuck on things, and that's a, that's part that's uh, barricade. One of the things that <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, barricade, barricade for example. Uh, so um, you know, we in, in theory the idea that you're riding through an area and some bandits or some skeletons have set up a barricade for you, um, and you have to sort of like dismount and fight all those skeletons. Like that sounds like a fun idea. No, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> it doesn't exactly play out that way. No. Um, you're just sort of annoyed, <laughs> um, and you're like, "Well, can I like kind of ride around the top of the barricade?" And then it's a fight about whether yeah. the collision actually touches. Anyway, <laughs> that. uh, yeah, that's what I do. Uh, we're gonna fix that. So there are some some good changes to mounts um, coming. The, I think they should keep the barricades and make it to where if your horse is in, in it like has the gallop buff, where it's like going faster, it can break the barricade. I think the barricades serve a good way to provide texture and like uh, realism to the game, but I think there should be a way for the player to overcome it. Jump it. I don't like jumping it. I feel like jumping it would be harder because jumping it would probably require a separate animation, uh, you know, like collision with the object. I just think killing it would be way fucking easier. Like I, that's really what my, I, I think it's just way easier. Uh, coming soon and cooler sure. awesome. yeah you just bust um, the and i know through. that uh, i've been seeing this a lot as well in chat and this is something i can answer is uh Be great uh we we're, we're, i'm seeing Four a lot of people talk about yeah. ram like uh on on pc and so forth and like how that obviously grows over time with certain players not all players but certain players with certain spec machines and they eventually either have to force close or the game actually just ends up closing itself and then they have to come back into the game um i know with uh, patch 110 there was a uh, update related to a, a, a memory leak that we ended up addressing. Uh, but then in 111, uh, and I, I know that QA... You probably had to load the stash tabs for the players in Korea. That's probably why there was the memory leak, because they had to, like, because the, the way the game works, right, is that whenever you open your friends list, it opens every friends list for every person on Battle.net in Korea. It's like this weird thing that they've been doing. <laughs> and so... You know, because you don't have to just load the friends list. You also have to load like the Korean letters, which is like a whole extra thing. And you put all these together and like now it's like that is the stash tabs. And so forth. Our, our, our QA team has been working really closely with our like graphics consoles. engineering team and testing out uh, a fix that's going to be coming in there that should be helping out a lot of those players uh, and making sure that mem uh, VRAM stays stable throughout the, the, right. their gameplay and so Good. forth. So uh, that will also be in uh, 111. Uh, it's a popular question. I know a lot of people have been uh, hitting me up on that one specifically. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there was a question earlier about uh, overpower um, mm -hmm. and uh, the intent behind it, what like feature plans and so forth. Sure. Kind of similar to that one. Yeah. I think overpower is a stupid ability. I don't think it adds any inter in interest into the game. I, I think it's dumb. Who cares? Questions. I think there's a lot of questions related to a lot of these things that we do plan on actually. Well, totally. They're fundamentally like how the game works. So yep. I understand. Um, so the intent of overpower way back in the day was we really wanted to create a stat that was different than crit and felt meaningfully different that players could chase that had kind of a unique mechanic attached to well, it. Well, you, can't, you can't chase it though, right? Because you can't increase the chance of overpower uh, unless you have like, you know, the pulverized thing for druids. Like you can just increase its damage. Um, where overpower sits now is that I, I really, I, the idea of it I think is really cool, which is it rewards you for building a really tanky character and you get a big hit of damage that's really, really awesome. 
Um, it also scales off of your max health and then the current health percent that you have at the time and then also scales with fortify. So normally these stats aren't things that you want to scale to kill things, right? So we're trying to add another avenue. That, that actually, the way that he's explaining it right now actually makes me like overpower more because it's another way to like gear a character and to have health scaling and fortify scaling be damage scalers. I actually like this mindset. Uh, I wish we saw more things like this. You a, a vector to yeah, do that. Kind of and then the other thing that's unique it. about overpower and how we didn't want to just turn into critical strike chance and damage like a lot of mechanics can be, is that you have a baseline low percent to do it, right? It's 3% across everything. And you can never increase that baseline percent ever. And that is a design choice and a goal. And then the idea is that you can, however, get guaranteed overpowers by doing certain mechanics. So the Druid has some, the Necromancer has some, where it's like, hey, you do this thing, and the next one is guaranteed. So you can still play around it, but unlike crit, where you're chasing the random chance to get higher and higher and higher to get those procs, yeah. overpower just naturally happens kind of rarely, and then the builds that can use it get it guaranteed. And then that you have different vectors and avenues to scale it. The problem right now with overpower really is not necessarily an overpower problem, but it's really the crit vulnerable problem of these other things that scale multiplicatively just overshadow overpower in the same way that even dot damage is very much a lot of times overshadowed too. And so when we're looking at our revamp, the, like the dream and the goal and the utopia we're moving towards is all of these vectors, and not even just overpower, but there's some other ones that I know I'm thinking of that I can't, like those uh, legendary affixes that spawn stuff is another example. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah. Like sure. we want, when we give you a fantasy as a player, whether it's baseline or via legendaries and uniques, that you're able to build that into the late game and it's delivered on and you can actually scale and be just as good as anybody else. That's the goal. That will always be the goal that we move towards. We're not there yet, obviously, but that's, that's kind of the intent is overpower is another stat that you can actually chase meaningfully via lots of other stats too that it combines with to make a build. And that's kind of the point. Awesome. Um, and then uh, this is a question that I know everyone talks about. Um, I don't know if this, this group up here can fully answer it, but it's something that we can follow up on, which is uh, uh, the zooming in and zooming out on your character. These are pretty good questions. Getting a wider look of, of, of gameplay and so forth. I know there's obviously there's like performance uh, implications to that because it, it increases the draw distance mm -hmm. and so forth, and we have a ton of different platforms, so it has to be evaluated in any type of way. I think this is a two part problem. Like, there's so one part of the problem is that you're zoomed in too much, and another part of the problem is that NPCs in the game can attack you from beyond the zoom distance. So, like, if NPCs couldn't attack you from off-screen, the zoom distance problem would not be as pronounced. So, they can completely fix the attack range, even if they can't fix the zoom distance. If we were to make that type of uh, change, because even when it does zoom out on bosses and so forth, there's, like, some, some resolution or scaling and so forth that kind of occurs there. That's... Please don't kill me, engineers, if I'm saying that wrong. But, <laughs> but, uh, maybe that's another uh, topic we can bring up during like a, another campfire chat with engineers, uh, uh, possibly to to maybe clarify a little bit on that or or so, or we can just follow up uh, separately after after the campfire chat. But I know that's a a question that a lot of people have been asking. Um, and then there's a uh, there's questions regarding um, uh, are there any additional uh, options for customization down the road uh, that you guys are looking at, like pets or wings, et cetera. Um, I know it's something that we're looking at and evaluating. So yeah, did they not have an answer? Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, next one. Yeah, I, I was kind of like, yeah, I wanted to, they don't make it. I mean, they, they should at least like, I mean like the game director should have at least like some idea of what I don't know, I feel like Joe should know at least kind of why we don't have a higher zoom distance. I, I don't know, fuck. Depending on like player feedback, right now we're very focused on, uh, you know, obviously creating additional more content for players yeah. to play through uh, mm -hmm. at the moment, more more so than than uh, some of the, the, the cosmetic pieces and so forth, but it is something I know that uh, players have been asking for. Yeah, we right. want to add more stuff like that. <clears throat> um, Isn't POE um, also that stuff is really in? fun to add. Not as much as uh, But uh, we felt that right now what was really important is helping sorcerers, helping barbarians, yeah. and um, some of these other buffs to classes. 
And I think there's, uh, uh, we'll do this one last question uh, here before before we end the stream, but one uh, thing that people have been asking about is like all the changes that they, they're seeing today, is this like encapsulating everything that we're doing? We had a question in here uh, regarding sure, like, for instance, too. someone enjoyed playing uh, a frozen orb sorcerer mm -hmm. in, in uh, like, Diablo 2, for instance, and wanting to mm. have that same type of fantasy in Diablo 4. Do you guys plan on doing additional adjustments in the future regarding other builds or sure. other, like creating uh, variability across that? Sure, no, absolutely. Uh, this patch, uh, you know, I talked a little bit about like we have our short term goals and long term things we're thinking about. Um, forever more long term, really, infinitely long term, is the idea that, you know, Every fantasy that we sell you, and I can talk a lot about, I talk to the team about this all the time. Like, and by sell, we but, yeah, all right, yeah, sell is probably the bad word, but I, I think. Bro, this dude's worried about getting a fucking, another Reddit post. He's like, oh, fuck. Oh, no. This is a new guy, right? So he doesn't really, he doesn't get the, the situation. That way, like we're advertising we, it. Like if you see it on legendary aspects, every that's really see, what I mean. If you see it on passives, you see yes. it on skill tags. Like we're saying, like, hey, yeah. look, this is a cool thing for you when to go after. When we show you ah, something yeah. that is cool and awesome, then we deliver on it, longer? right? Like when you yeah. log into Necromancer, you see right away just when you see your basic skills. Like, hey, there's a bone thing, a shadow thing, and a blood thing, right? And then there's army stuff. Mm -hmm. All of those things should be delivered on and be awesome. And then. As you go through the game, when you get legendaries uh -huh. and uniques, you should unlock one double down and make those things really cool, and two unlock more things that are awesome. And what our goal always is, is that all of these things are awesome and cool. And when we find something that isn't hitting the mark, we either buff it or redesign it in such a way that it's that it's hitting the mark and it's attractive and ideally really fun and exciting for players to chase. Like that's always what we're going to be trying to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this isn't exhaustive forever. We are always going to be adapting and updating things. And if something just really isn't working, even if it's like something that I made, I have no hubris about like, hey, that thing that was awful, make it something good, right? Like at the end of the day, good. the players are the ultimate uh, judge, jury, and executioner for us of exactly. like, did it work? Is it good? Is it fun? Yes or no? If not, this is the mindset that every like this actually like I mean let, let's get this guy on more. This is great. It's exactly what I want to hear. Yeah, he gets it. And we have to be uh, malleable right. enough right. to change that. Right, and we could be looking right. at data too. We could be seeing yeah. like how many players are picking what kinds of passes, Absolutely. what kind of aspects they're the wearing, yeah. what kind of uniques they're using, yeah. like, and we we can see. You know, it's so, like we know when like if, if no one's equipping a particular aspect. Like we can see that, but like, okay, well, that's clearly something we're going to need to want to rework or update or yep. buff or do something with, right? Like this, to Adam's point, it is a never-ending process. You know, we keep talking about how, you know, we're all here trying to make Diablo 4 the very best game that it can be. And the reality is this is, this is the iterations of the conversation with the community mm -hmm. and, and also looking at this kind of data. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, we have a ton of changes here coming up for 111 that you guys got to see here, especially for class changes. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Adam, for kind of walking us yeah, through totally. everything. Yeah. And then, um, we do have final patch notes coming next Wednesday. That is mm -hmm. August 2nd, so just Revealed. a reminder on that. Revealed full, where yeah. people can read through them uh, and you know provide full feedback and so forth. And then, of course, uh, that's my tick. Someone called out my tick earlier oh. and so forth. Ah. Stop it, Adam. <laughs> That's my tick. I will. I will. Stop that one day. I probably won't. Uh, and but we actually do have our uh, patch for one one one. The date will be on August eighth as well. So uh, players can expect patch notes next Wednesday, and then of course one 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 hitting on August eighth, which is Tuesday. So. Looking forward to seeing uh, everyone's feedback, everyone jumping in, uh, and uh, checking out, of course, the new changes coming to all, pretty much every class now <laughs> in, in regards to uh, balance changes and so forth. Uh, oh, I did it's it okay. again. And so forth. Now you're in your own head. Now, like, I'm, in my, every now, time now I'm just stuck in this, like, my, my own empty room saying it over and over. Uh, but anyway. And, and give us feedback on how this went, like, and yeah, how you like yeah. this, this format for talking yeah, about patch notes. Exactly, yeah. We, we want to see if. Uh, I think for me, uh, like this was a tremendous improvement and it was a lot better than the last one. Uh, I like this a lot. I think that what really helps a lot in terms of getting feedback is to understand the philosophy behind why something exists and why it's done in a certain way. For example, like the way that uh, Adam here, uh, yeah, this, this, is, yeah, this is the other Adam, uh, explained overpower actually made a lot of sense and I can agree with where he's coming from. So 
like because making a change and then letting players try to like discern out like this is what the play this is what they're this is what they're trying to do to us like it's not that good right and so if we have them explain it then we have something to work off of then we have an idea rather than a like just some fu fucking bullshit uh this worked out really well with the community so yeah please provide feedback uh, us going through the notes and then of course releasing the notes afterwards um it, it's yeah. a huge help for us and how to communicate with you guys uh out in the then community. we know why it's so, bad yeah uh, thank you guys again we hope you uh enjoyed this uh Campfire Chat Plus Plus, New Game Plus Plus. Sure. Yeah. Um, and uh, we will see you uh, on our next stream, which uh, we haven't announced on. We're thinking about doing some Campfire Chats with like maybe other teams here, uh, whether it's our uh, art animation teams, uh, audio teams, and so forth, just so you guys can see uh, kind of a, a deeper look into some of the development uh, within. We need to have one with the UI team where they can explain why we can't have our character's health on top of the character, like in PoE. And why we can't have uh, why we can't have debuffs? But yeah, why don't we have a, why don't we have one of those? That'd be really nice. Yeah, like just simple debuffs. Just play Poe. Well, I play Poe too, right? I, I like Diablo. I, I like Poe. I I just want like I just want to have I just want to be able to see the debuffs. Like that's all. Like I'm not am I crazy? I just want to be able to see the debuffs. Like fuck. <laughs> In, uh, our seasons and Diablo 4 uh, from other people so we do plan yeah. on uh, expanding these a little bit more and of course having campfire chats and dev update streams uh, to talk more about the game gameplay and design and so forth uh... <laughs> you yeah, did it again there you go. Right. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great weekend thank you again from the Diablo 4 team here at Blizzard and uh, yeah have a great Friday thanks everybody I hate to say it but um uh this actually was way better than what I had expected. I had expected this to be a fucking disaster. And I was wrong. And to be honest, I say I hate to say it, but the truth is I'm not. Like, uh, I, this is good. Uh, a lot of the things that were problematic in the game, uh, they just straight up took them out of the game. Uh, the problems that players had were directly addressed. And so this is good. Damage control, that's all this was. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's kind of true, uh, for sure, but I'm glad they're doing damage control, and I'm, like, I, I try to, like, this is my outlook, okay? Whenever things are going well, I try to be positive. That's the way that I see things, because I view it as, like, positive reinforcement, as in, good things are happening, so I'm going to be happy, so they keep making good things happy, or happen, so they're happy because we're happy and everybody's happy, right? Because, like, my goal, like, I, I don't really, like, it's not about, like, oh, the fucking, like, oh, it should have been ready on release. It should have been, of course it should have been, absolutely. But whenever I see them explaining things in a way that I think is not condescending, they're being direct, they're solving some problems, okay, uh, I, I, will, I will deal with this. They're actually listening to the community, not doing what the WoW team did and saying, no, this is how we designed it, this is how it's supposed to be played. Yeah, exactly. They only respond to negative reinforcement, though. Well, then we'll wait to have to do that again. But at least we don't have to right now, which is a positive thing. So, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it.